A warm greeting. Today is Friday, May 2, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. The 2025 Eastern Pacific hurricane season is approaching and officially begins on May 15. We're also one month away from the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season, which begins on June 1. As you may know, over the past few weeks and months, we've been monitoring how sea surface temperatures have been evolving in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. We're especially keeping a close eye on the Niño 3.4 region, which is the area we monitor to determine whether El Niño, La Niña, or neutral ENSO conditions are projected for the peak of the season. This is very important because it's one of the main factors that can influence cyclone activity in both the eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. Although we've recently discussed how much cyclone activity is expected in the Atlantic Ocean region, in this particular video I'd like to specifically focus on cyclone activity and what to expect for the upcoming eastern Pacific hurricane season, which begins in just 14 days. To recap, the eastern Pacific hurricane season typically threatens the western coast of Central America and parts of southern and western Mexico where tropical cyclones often approach the coast and sometimes cause significant damage. Before discussing the factors we're evaluating to determine how active the season may be, I'd like to share two forecasts that have been recently published regarding expected cyclone activity in the eastern Pacific for the 2025 season. The first comes from the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources of El Salvador. In their latest bulletin regarding the hurricane season, they projected that 14 tropical storms will form in the eastern Pacific this year. Of these, seven could reach hurricane strength, and three of them could become major hurricanes, that is Category 3, Category 4, or Category 5. When we compare these numbers to what NOAA considers normal, the typical season includes 15 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes. This means that the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources of El Salvador is currently forecasting a near-normal season. We also have another forecast published by the Secretaria de Marina Armada de México, in which they also release their outlook for this season in the eastern Pacific. They are forecasting that 18 tropical storms will form, of which 10 could reach hurricane strength, and 4 could become major hurricanes. If we once again compare this to what NOAA considers a normal hurricane season in the eastern Pacific, we can conclude that the Mexican Navy is forecasting a near-normal or slightly above-normal season. Now that we've discussed those forecasts, I personally wanted to share with you my own opinion about the upcoming season. The first thing I must emphasize is that there is considerable uncertainty about how much tropical cyclone activity we'll see in the eastern Pacific. This is because there are still some factors we don't know precisely how they'll evolve this summer, mainly the ENSO conditions in the Pacific. If neutral ENSO conditions persist, or if La Nina redevelops, that would likely result in an active hurricane season in the Atlantic, and this could suppress tropical cyclone activity in the eastern Pacific. This is because cyclone activity is typically inversely related between the Atlantic and the eastern Pacific, meaning that if we have an active hurricane season in the eastern Pacific, that often results in lower activity in the Atlantic, and vice versa. Another important factor is that we are keeping a close eye on how sea surface temperature anomalies are evolving. While sea surface temperatures are currently above normal south of Mexico and western Central America, which could support an active season, it's also important to note that in blue, you can see a region where sea surface temperatures are quite cold off the western and southern coasts of Baja California Sur. This area is important to monitor closely, because if those cold waters persist in the coming months, that could definitely lead to a less active season than currently projected, as it may create atmospheric stability that could hinder the formation of cyclones or weaken systems that manage to develop into tropical depressions or tropical storms. So basically, we have three key factors that we'll be watching closely, and for which, at this moment, we don't have reliable forecasts, and much can still change in the coming weeks. Remember, neutral ENSO conditions or the return of La Nina can favor more cyclone activity in the Atlantic and limit storm formation in the eastern Pacific. Additionally, we'll be monitoring how sea surface temperature anomalies evolve. If the current pattern persists, it would likely result in less favorable conditions for cyclone formation. What I can tell you is that most Atlantic hurricane season forecasts currently agree that it could be more active than usual, and therefore, I tend to believe that the eastern Pacific hurricane season will likely be near normal or slightly below normal, assuming the projections we have right now hold true. In fact, take a look at the latest ENSO forecast from NOAA, which shows that for the summer months there is a high probability of neutral conditions or the return of La Nina. That would definitely increase activity in the Atlantic and decrease cyclone potential in the eastern Pacific. And as if that weren't enough, Let's now look at some discrepancies between global models regarding the parameters that could influence cyclone activity in the eastern Pacific. Let's start with the latest run of the Canadian model, which came out yesterday. For the months of August, September, and October, it shows neutral ENSO conditions or a weak La Nina in the Pacific, 
along with above normal sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic and slightly cooler or near normal temperatures south of Mexico and in western Central America. If the Canadian model's forecast is correct, this could result in greater activity in the Atlantic and reduced activity in the eastern Pacific. Look closely at the eastern Pacific region. The Canadian model projects slightly cooler than normal ocean surface temperatures, which reduces cyclone potential. Also, in red, you can see areas that would represent above normal atmospheric pressure for August, September, and October, which could be an indicator of lower cyclone activity. Even so, despite these less than optimal conditions for cyclone formation, note that the Canadian model is still projecting above normal rainfall across Central America and much of Mexico this summer. This could signal the formation of some tropical cyclones, but again, if the sea surface temperature and pressure anomalies unfold as projected by this model, we'll likely see a somewhat less active season in the eastern Pacific. However, on the other hand, other models show a very different scenario, such as the latest run of the CFS model, which shows El Nino developing in the eastern Pacific during the summer months, along with above normal sea surface temperatures throughout the eastern Pacific. Unlike the Canadian model, these conditions could favor cyclone formation in the western part of Central America and southern Mexico. If we zoom in on the eastern Pacific, you can see in yellow, orange, and red the above normal sea surface temperatures projected for this region during the months of August, September, and October. Despite this, this model does align with the Canadian model in suggesting that atmospheric pressures will be higher than usual in the region, which could imply less cyclone activity than one might expect given the warm sea surface anomalies. In fact, according to the precipitation anomaly projection, the yellow and brown colors represent below normal rainfall across much of the area where tropical cyclones typically form in the eastern Pacific. This represents a major difference from the Canadian model's projections, so basically, between the CFS model and the Canadian model, we have complete disagreement, which increases the uncertainty regarding how active the hurricane season might be. In my opinion, I believe one projection is fairly reliable, and that is the European model. In its latest forecast, it shows above normal sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific, which could support the formation of some tropical cyclones. However, with neutral ENSO conditions and a warm North Atlantic, it appears that cyclonic activity in the North Atlantic and the eastern Pacific will be in competition, which could definitely suppress activity in the eastern Pacific. This model, like the CFS model, projects above normal rainfall along southern Mexico and western Central America, which could be a precursor to a near normal or slightly below normal season. Speaking in terms of storm and hurricane numbers, the model projects 14 tropical storms, compared to the normal of 15, 7 hurricanes, where the normal is 8, and 90% of normal accumulated cyclone energy, ACE. So in this case, the European model, like the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources of El Salvador and the Mexican Navy, is forecasting that the 2025 hurricane season in the eastern Pacific is likely to be near normal. Personally, I also agree with this forecast. However, I remind you that a lot can still change, especially depending on what happens with ENSO conditions in the Pacific, and how that impacts Atlantic cyclone activity. If, in the end, the Atlantic hurricane season turns out to be more active than normal, as is currently projected, then it's likely the Eastern Pacific season will remain near normal. But if there are unexpected changes, and Atlantic activity decreases, that could open the door to a slightly above normal season in the Eastern Pacific. To conclude, on a personal note, I believe that residents of Western Central America and the Southern and Western regions of Mexico should prepare for a hurricane season that is typical according to the climatological average of the last 30 years. Regardless of how much tropical activity we see this year, it is important that everyone prepares, because just one hurricane or cyclone can cause significant damage in the area where you live. We will be monitoring the evolution of atmospheric and oceanic conditions as we approach the official start of the hurricane season, both in the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. Stay tuned to the YouTube channel, as in the coming days I'll be sharing an update on what we anticipate for the Atlantic. I hope that all our friends in Central America and Mexico are ready for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, and that you can count on the team to keep you informed throughout the entire season. Well, that's all for this video, but before I go, I'd like to invite you to like this video, and also subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button and click the bell icon so you'll get notifications when I upload new videos. I look forward to seeing you all during this hurricane season. And don't forget to share this content so we can reach more people. Now that's it. For, until the next video, I hope everyone has an excellent day. See you soon.